Barrier is a synchronization mechanism that makes threads to wait until the required number of threads has reached a certain point in the code. Once all the threads have reached the barrier, they are all unblocked and may proceed. Okay, let me show you an example usage of Barrier. Now notice that the Barrier implementation is not currently available in MSVC or GCC compilers, so I'm going to use Boost version of Barrier. So I have downloaded the latest version of Boost from the website and added it to the project. A link to Boost website is in the resource section for this video, so please download it if you don't already have it. For this example, I'm going to need Boost Thread, Barrier, Bind, and Atomic Header files. Then, we are going to have a function called Funk, which take Barrier reference and reference to Atomic Integer variable as arguments. Okay, here, I'm going to demonstrate the fact that barrier holding threads until the specified number of thread reached the barrier. So for that, what I'm going to do is execute this function from multiple threads, and each thread will increment a counter variable. Then, we are going to have a barrier.wait, so all the threads have to wait there until expected number of thread reach this code. Now, we can print out the value of the counter after wait. Now from the main function, I'm going to construct a barrier with value 3. This constructor will indicate barrier, that it has to hold until three threads reach the wait call. Now, we can declare our counter variable and set it to 0. Then, we can launch three or more threads with above function and pass the barrier and counter as the argument in this way. And of course, the join call. Now, since our barrier holds the threads in its wait until three threads reach the wait call, all the threads in this example should print value 3 to the console. So let's run this example. Okay, as you can see, all the threads have printed out value 3, which means all thread had to wait in the wait call until three thread come to the wait. So here, barrier works as expected. Now if we remove this barrier.wait call and rerun this example again, you will see that each thread printed out a different value. So this is evidence for functionality of barriers. Okay, now let's see how to implement our own version of barrier class. Here, I'm going to implement barrier class in two ways. The first approach is basically to spin the threads until the required number of threads reach the barrier. This is not the most efficient implementation, but it is very easy to implement and comes in handy for the cases where a limited number of threads are required. In the second approach, I'm going to use condition variables and unique locks to avoid the spin lock. So let's first jump into the first approach. So let me declare our class here. In the spin wait approach, we need three local variables. Threshold variable, which is the number of threads, has to reach the barrier in order to proceed. Then count variable, which is the number of threads currently needed to reach the threshold value. And the generation variable. This generation variable will reset when one set of threads are allowed to proceed. Now in this barrier class constructor, we can initialize the threshold value and the count value to the given argument value. Then, let's see how to implement the wait function. As soon as a thread reach the wait function, we can set the generation for that thread. Then, these threads will have to wait until count becomes zero, because the count variable represent a number of threads which it has to wait until the threshold value. So here, we can have that condition. If the count is zero, then we can simply reset the count to the threshold value so that the next batch of threads can wait on barrier and increment the generation. If count has not reached zero after this thread, then this thread has to wait, or spin, until count becomes zero, or generation value to get change as we change the generation value only after setting the count to zero. So in this case, we can yield the execution of this thread to save CPU resources. 
This is the first implementation of Barrier Class. The second approach is very similar to the first approach. But instead of yielding the execution until the generation change, we can use conditional variable with unique lock to notify the threads and allow them to continue. So for this implementation, we need extra mutex and unique lock with the mutex. And then, in the else condition, instead of looping in the while loop, we can have condition variable and check the generation as the condition check to notify the waiting thread. And in the if condition, we can notify all the waiting threads if the thread count reaches the threshold value, and that's it. This is how we can implement our own version of Barrier Class.